Dick Cavett Show. Tonight, Dick guests are Marlon Brando, Lumi Indian Tribal Chairman Sam Kagey, Project Director for the Lumi Tribe, Dr. Wallace Heath, from the Northern Cheyenne Tribal Council, Dennis Slipperhand, Chairman of the Pyramid Paiute Tribe, Mervyn Wright. Ladies and gentlemen, Dick Cavett. <laughs> You'll go too far and then hate yourself in the morning. Uh, very nice to see you. Say, there was a slight um, typographical error about tonight's show. My guest is Marlon Perkins of, uh, <laughs> of Zoo Parade. Uh, but I know that no one will. No, I'm, I, I'm kidding, I hope. Um, what was the other thing I just want to mention? Because I don't want to waste any time right now. Just a brief quiz. Let's see if anyone knows. In what context was the line said, I could have been a contender? Does anyone? What? On the waterfront? No. no, it was Senator Muskie commenting on the Watergate hearing. As you can see, I don't want to waste any time out here, even though I already had. My guest tonight, special guest, is Marlon Brando. And with him tonight are um, some other gentlemen who are from the Lummi Indian Tribal Council, Sam Kagey. A project director for the Lummi Tribe, Dr. Wallace Heath, from the Northern Cheyenne Tribal Council, Dennis Limberhand, and chairman of the Paiute, and that's the Pyramid Paiute Tribe, Mervyn Wright. To save time, take a pause, we'll take a message, we'll be right back. My guest flew all the way from Tahiti to be here tonight, which sets some kind of record, I think. I'm very honored to have him here. You have uh, caught glimpses of him in the past as Stanley Kowalski in Streetcar Named Desire, Zapata in Viva Zapata, Mark Antony and Julius Caesar, Terry Malloy in On the Waterfront, Vito Corleone in The Godfather, and uh, Paul in Last Tango in Paris. Uh, he despises superlatives. Uh, he's often been called the best actor in America or in the world, but I want to downplay that tonight because I, I want him to be happy. Will you welcome, please, Mr. Marlon Brando. <laughs> I guess, um, how are you would be as good as anything. Uh, I'm uh, kind of weary. Are you wiped out from the jet trip? Yeah, I am. Yeah, I, I appreciate the amount of miles you have been uh, covering to get here, and you've been, you were delayed, and it was a ghastly story, but um, nice, nice of you to come and put up with it all. Um, I'm so self-conscious, <laughs> I don't know what to do, because we spoke on the... <laughs> We spoke on the phone for over six hours, and a lot of it was about what neither of us can stand about this kind of program. <laughs> to the point where I know I don't know <laughs> how to avoid all that stuff. Will you help me as we move well, along? Well, I think that we, uh, <clears throat> I had a special uh, treat because you allowed me to come into your, your life, and Dick describes his background as a young boy in Nebraska, which I think would be worth telling about 20 minutes. You mind if I go into all that? <laughs> I love it. I, I've suddenly forgotten it all. Yeah. Um, 
Anyway, I, uh, have you seen any good movies lately? <laughs> Super Rich Shadow? Oh, I, that's supposed to be in my dressing room. Mm. No, that's part of the, uh, that's merely, that's merely oh, part, of the, part of the commercial. Um, where was I? Do you go to the movies? Come to think of it. Once in a while. I'll tell you what happened. We, we talked on the phone, and at one point in the conversation, you reeled off about seven or eight things that you had observed about me watching the show, um, about how I sometimes don't like people and pretend that I do, and vice versa, uh, and, and about a dozen more. And they were so uncanny and on the nose that I decided I could never work again. <laughs> and <laughs> now I, I feel it. Would you like a glass of water? <laughs> A bug just flew out of my glass. I know it. I'm <laughs> terribly embarrassed. As he started to pour the water, a bug flew out. <laughs> Probably a critic. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Let me ask you an obligatory question, and we can get that out of the way right now. And if at any time I get into things that you don't want to talk about, um, give me a signal, puff out your cheeks. Uh, Put your out, yeah. That'd be fine. If you had the Academy Awards, night to do over again. Would you do any of that differently? Well, <laughs> uh, I, I don't think so, no. I felt that, uh, that there was an opportunity for, since the American Indian hasn't been able to hear his voice heard, or have his voice heard anywhere in the history of the United States. Uh, I felt that it was a marvelous opportunity for an Indian to be able to voice his opinion to 85 million people. I guess that was the number. And uh, I felt that he had a right to, in view of what Hollywood has done to him, and uh, I was embarrassed for Shashin. She wasn't able to say what she intended to say. And uh, I was distressed that people should have booed and whistled and stomped, even though perhaps it was directed uh, at myself. They should have at least had the courtesy to listen to her. But uh, I think she did very well, and I was, uh, I was I was very glad that she did have what opportunity she, she had to, to say what she did. And uh, uh, Why I... Why didn't she get to read your entire, your entire statement as you planned it? Well, I think that they felt that it was inappropriate. And um, I, I actually don't know. I, I think they just, they didn't want her there. They didn't want the uh, evening interrupted with that particular note. And from their insular point of view, I felt that perhaps they, they had a point. But uh, I don't think that people uh, generally realize what the motion picture industry has done to the American Indian. As a matter of fact, all ethnic groups, uh, all minorities, all non-whites, and uh, people just simply don't realize, they just took it for granted that that's the way the people were going to be presented and these cliches were just going to be perpetuated. And uh, so when someone makes a protest of some kind and says, no, we do, please don't present the Chinese this way or please, I mean, on this network every night, well, perhaps not every night, but you can see silly renditions of human behavior. Uh, the uh, leering Filipino houseboy, uh, the wily Japanese, or the, the kook or the gook, and uh, the idiot black man, and the stupid Indian. And it just goes on and on and on. And people actually don't realize how deeply uh, 